Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take an image and optimize it for laser engraving using only one program to get really cool results like this. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Now, when you're gonna laser engrave a picture, you wanna make sure it's optimized for the laser. Otherwise, it looks kinda of crazy. As you've seen in some of my other videos, we've done this with many other programs. But today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it only with Lightburn. Lightburn is super powerful. It does a ton of things. And one of the cool features it has is to adjust images right inside of Lightburn. Now I'm gonna show you where to find the tool and how to use it in today's video. Let's do it. So the first thing you wanna do is get Lightburn open like we have here. Then you wanna go and open your picture. So I'm gonna double click this one right here, which brings in a huge picture of my son and I. Aww. And this is a project we're gonna do for my wife, Lindsay. I'm gonna shrink this down to about nine, so it's much more manageable. And I did that by going up right here to the width, and I entered the width I wanted. I'm gonna scroll this down and scroll it in. So the actual size I wanna burn on this is eight by eight. So what I'm gonna do is actually go here and grab a square come to the bottom and choose the t1 this is right here this isn't a layer like a burn layer this is actually a tool layer and i'm going to make a square and that didn't work so we'll click t1 again and then i want to unlock the box up here click the little cursor here and it'll have my square highlighted i want to make this the size of the burn i want which is eight by eight and I'm gonna grab that and bring it down here and lock this just like that. So this cannot change anymore. We have an eight by eight picture. And I know that I want to fill this eight by eight because that's the size we're gonna use for the burn. Now I made my picture a little bit too small. So I'm gonna click the picture in the background here. I'm gonna to go to height and I'm gonna go eight and hit enter. So now what that does, if I pull back on my mouse wheel, it scrolls it out. That brings the height of the picture to eight. And you can come up and it'll snap in once you get close. So once you have your orange square in here, cause that's the square we're gonna use, you can, if you want, you can adjust the picture through here kind of wherever you want it. In my case, it's not bad right there, but I'm gonna do some more in a second. Now I'm gonna click here and highlight the whole project, the square and the picture. I'm gonna right click and apply mask. What that does is show you a crop. And if I click out of everything, I can click in the center and drag my picture around until I'm happy with that crop. Do I wanna see more of this side? Do I wanna see more of this side? I'm probably gonna go more like this. So I get a little more of my son in there and a less of my arms on the left there. Okay, so once I'm happy with that picture, I know it's eight by eight, it's in the size I wanna do, I wanna right click and choose flatten. So now that incorporated the picture into that square. So now we are cropped. If you're getting value out of today's video, please hit that like button below to help share it with the rest of the community. It really helps the video and the channel. Now back to it. Now I wanna click the picture so it's highlighted, right click and adjust image. This is the whole reason why we're here today. This is such a cool feature in Lightburn. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. So I have been testing on scrap pieces of wood and I know the settings I wanna use, but I wanna walk through these real quick with you just so you can kind of get an idea. On the left side is gonna be the original, on the right side is going to be how it's gonna burn. So you can choose all the different types of burns here with the pictures. You can use a Jarvis if you want, a Stucky. Um, you can dither it if you'd prefer to dither it. In our case, uh, you can do uh, newsprint as well, which is just like dot or not. It's kind of just like a, a newspaper's printed, I guess that's the best way to say it. In my case, I'm gonna use halftone and that kind of looks like this. I'm actually using my CO2 laser. My diode laser is in the process of being reset up. I moved it and I don't have it set up. So in this case, I'm gonna use the CO2 laser, which I know does not have the same amount of resolution as my diode does, but that's okay. So currently I have my cells per inch set to 80. Oops, if you hit enter, it'll close that window. So don't do that. Uh, you can change this. Uh, you can do 40, 
You can do more, you can do less. What it does, if I zoom in, you can see this. It takes how many cells are actually per inch. So if I make this 90, you'll see a whole bunch more dots go in there. And if I make it less, like 60, the dots are a lot less or bigger in those areas. So basically it adds a whole bunch of dots inside each square inch. I believe I tested at 75. I'm gonna use the angle at 22 and a half. Some people change this to 45, which just change the angle of the dots as far as how they burn. I'm gonna leave it at 22 and a half because that's what I tested on. Uh, the line interval here, this is going to set your line interval and your DPI. I know with my CO2 laser, 0.1 is fine. I can go probably a little bit less than that and be okay too. I'm going to use 0.1. I know that on my diode laser though, not my CO2 laser, my diode laser, I usually use something like 315 DPI, which is 0 0.081. But my CO2 laser just doesn't have the resolution for that. So I'm going to leave it at DPI of 254 or 254 and a line interval of 0.1. Now we get to the fun stuff. Uh, so your contrast, your brightness, your gamma, what is all that? Well, if you play with these sliders, you can see if I slide this way up, it gives you a whole different look, your contrasts, your blacks and your whites all together. If I bring this back down, you can kind of see it gives you more of the grays and the shading. Uh, I know there's more technical terms, but this is just a quick tutorial to get you rolling and learn how to use this image adjust tool. I believe I've been testing at is 11 as far as the contrast. I've been uh, playing with the brightness a little. You can make your image much brighter. You can make your image much darker if you want. I'm going to leave it at zero. The gamma, same thing. You can play with that and kind of get a whole different look. And my suggestion is check it out, see what look you're going for, um, maybe do a bunch of test burns to see which one you like the best. And then we have what the enhance radius over here. So this is kind of like your sharpness. You can turn the sharpness way, way up, and then you can actually pull some in, or you can bring the sharpness way down and kind of give it a mix. What I like to do in the testing I did is I did a nine sharpness and I believe I did a 50 enhance. So you can see it's a little sharper, but it's not crazy. Again, I'm using my CO2 laser. So, you know, don't want to get too detailed. Otherwise I won't see it. When you're all done with your settings, you just want to hit the okay button here and that will save all of these to the layer you selected on your picture. So if you didn't select a layer yet on your picture, um, I'm using layer 10. That's just what I've been using for testing. You could use one, two, it doesn't really matter which one you use. If you right click and go to adjust image and just double check, everything is the same and it is. Hit it okay. If you change your layers once in a great while, those settings will change. Um, it usually doesn't, but you never know. So now we're good. Now, the only thing you have left to do here is select your power and speed here. Uh, I did a bunch of testing. I know that I want my max power set at 50, my min power set at 15, and that's that. So once you have your speed and your powers done, uh, everything else is right here that we did. The image, the cells, the halftone angle, the number of passes, we're only going to do one. Uh, and this is going to be all set up. I highly suggest when you get your picture dialed in, make this image much smaller, like two inches by two inches or something, and do a couple tests on a piece of wood and you'll kind of get an idea of what your picture is really going to look like and then blow it up and do it on a big project like we're going to do here. So one other cool thing, if you right click, go to preview, it's going to show you what your project's going to look like. It's going to show you where everything is going to burn in here if you zoom way in with your wheel there. If I zoom back out, it's kind of going to give you an overview. Also, it looks like this is going to take me 25 minutes to do and that's eight by eight. Now this is pretty fast. It's on the, the CO2 laser on a dial laser. This would be much, much slower, but that's okay because you get a lot higher resolution on the diodes. You can actually hit play here and see how everything's gonna move and how it's gonna burn. Uh, if you wanna watch the whole thing, you can grab your slider and slide it up and just kind of watch how everything is gonna burn in there. I'm just gonna hit okay. At this point, it is ready for me to send it to the laser. 
So I'm gonna go get my piece of wood aligned and shoot it right over to that laser. If you need to know how to align your piece, there's gonna be a video up in this area. So after this video, go ahead and jump on and watch that one. So I'm gonna go start this burn and we'll be right back with the results. And through the magic of video, boom, there it is. Like you saw in the first shot of the video, this is a piece of hard maple, and this is how it turned out. Now, it's not too bad. A little dark up in my eye area, so I can work on settings there. Uh, I have tested this quite a bit. I made some mistakes on the back here, and I tested it on a small piece of wood with a whole bunch of different settings. I even did a square grid over here for power, and you can see here, I did a bunch of spiders too. No. <laughs> well, here's the deal. I have never done a big picture on wood before. I know there's a bunch of wood hacks that make these even look better, and those will be coming up in the future. I cannot wait to test those. But overall, this is not a bad thing. I think this is a great start to learning the uh, image adjusting tool in Lightburn. And if you play with it, you can get some really, really cool things. I mean, the details are here. You can even see the tattoo on my arm over here, which is really cool. I just need to lighten up my side over here so you can see my face a little better. And I'm definitely gonna learn that. The image adjust tool will be great for pretty much any images you do, whether it's on wood, canvas, uh, coasters, anything you do. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick demonstration of how to use it. I'm actually gonna take this picture, drop it in the CNC, cut it out in a heart shape and give it to my wife, Lindsay, because I think she'll love this. This is just one of the many things that Lightburn does. It's such a cool tool. It's such a powerful tool. And if you haven't seen this one right here, you definitely want to check that out because that is an awesome project.